Hey everybody, it's Aaron here with Robert and welcome to Get Your Geek On Review of Wakanda Forever, the newest Black Panther movie, the second in the installment, and I don't know what number in the MCU. 30. It's 30. The 30th movie released by Marvel Studios in the MCU, which is insane. Yes. Um, but uh, but yeah, we are we're here to talk about it. First off, I'm going to, you know, say apologies because this is going to be a long video, especially oh, if you yeah. stick around for the spoiler version, um, because there's a lot to discuss in this movie. Uh, so sorry that it's long, but there's a lot of good things that we yeah. want to talk about. Um, and number two, we are going to go non-spoilers and then spoilers. Um, so we're going to start off. We're, we're going to just kind of discuss the movie in general. And then, you know, we'll we'll be very clear about when we're transitioning into spoiler territory. Um but before we get started, you know, just talking about this movie, obviously, you know, the first Black Panther movie and, you know, the the introduction of the character of Black Panther was back in Captain America Civil War portrayed mm -hmm. by Chadwick Boseman playing uh, T'Challa. Um, and, you know, he passed away suddenly in 2020, um, right as they were getting, you know, they were they were starting work on this movie. Um, and they were they hadn't locked in the script yet, but they'd started to do some pre-production stuff. And then that was very sudden and, and unexpected. And so they had to kind of reconfigure things. Um, and, you know, there was even some question of of what this was going to look like and who would mm -hmm. be involved. You know, Ryan Coogler, who made the first movie, um, you know, spoke uh, about really ha having this be really challenging to even think about how to make a Black Panther movie without Chadwick Boseman. Um, and I think, you know, the cast and, and Coogler himself and, and, you know, a lot of the behind the scenes people have, have talked about how this was a really cathartic experience for them um, to be able to, to make this movie. And uh, you can feel the presence of T'Challa. And I won't say this isn't a spoiler at all. Um, but there is a conversation between um, Queen Ramonda and and Shuri where, you know, Ramonda talks about, you know, that T'Challa is dead, but he is not gone. Mm -hmm. um, and that was that's <clears throat> that's kind of the overarching message of any anything in this movie that touches on, you know, T'Challa or, you know, and, and that's a stand in for Chadwick Boseman right. um, is really that. Yes, he's dead, but that doesn't mean he's gone. He lives. He lives right. on with us, and the the legacy uh, of of the man and the character live on. Um, and I really felt like that came through beautifully. But um, you know, before we really talk about the movie, you know, I already mentioned Ryan Coogler. Um, the cast of this movie is, you know, a lot of returning characters: Letitia Wright, Lupita Nyong'o, Denai Guerrero, Winston Duke. Um, I already mentioned, you know, Ramonda. That's Angela Bassett, mm -hmm. um, Martin Freeman. Um, you know, uh, there's there's a couple other, but those are the main kind of returning people. And then uh, our big two two big newcomers are uh, Tinach uh, Huerta Mejia and uh, Dominique Thorne, um, playing Namor and uh, Ironheart, Riri Williams. Um, and, you know, the cast uh, did a great job, you know, just as they did in the first one. I, I thought um, it was a, it was really top notch. The movie is directed beautifully. I thought it, it looks great. Um, the special effects, I think, are actually an improvement on oh, yeah. uh, the first Black Panther movie. Um, and, you know, there's a lot to like in this movie. So I'm I'm interested in just like your general <laughs> initial thoughts. We saw the movie, uh, you know, yesterday, uh, last night. Um, we didn't really talk about it much. Nope. But I'm interested from you. Uh, you know, what, 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 how, did, how did you feel about this movie? Um, overall thoughts? I mean, this was... I, I mean, there. I have two thoughts. That's the funny thing. Uh, I mean, we have all, you know, multiple thoughts. But <laughs> I have two thoughts. Uh -huh. uh, two different viewpoints, I guess I'll say, of this movie. One is... It is a beautiful thank you and uh, send off to to Chadwick. You know, this was almost a dedicated film to him. I, I don't think this is a spoiler to say that you actually get a moment of silence at the very beginning of the film. Yeah, I thought that was the best thing to do. They do almost a memorial at the beginning of the film <clears throat> through the credits uh, where we normally see all the characters mm. in, the, in the Marvel part. It was all Chadwick. Yeah. And if you noticed, it goes completely silent. There's no sound, nothing. And that was the moment of silence to Chadwick. And I uh, I enjoyed that. I thought that was beautiful thing that Marvel did that, 
everybody did. You know, everyone who's touched this film did. And I feel like this most film was a great film to say thank you to Chad to to you know pave the way for these new characters essentially. But overall, I mean, I got a feeling that this film was be- meant to say thank you to Chad, mm-hmm. and it was great. It, it hit that button. It made me say, okay, you know, I do miss this guy. I wish you know he could be Black Panther still. I wish we could have seen what he could have done in the next you know, and in the next ten years, who knows what he would have been. Yeah. Then the other side of me is the critic of the film was more like, it's a good film. I mean, it's not, I wasn't moved by the film itself, but by the message to Chadwick, if that makes sense at all. Um, yeah, no, I, I think, I hope that makes I think sense. I, I think I agree with you that when the movie is clearly a, a tribute and, and a thank you to the legacy of Chadwick Bose, Boseman, the person by virtue of celebrating T'Challa, the, right. the character, it works beautifully. Yes. Um, there are other portions of the movie that are not as focused on that journey of grief and, uh, you know, those pieces that, that still work. They're still good. Right. Um, but, but they're not at that level of, of greatness. And I think, you know, one of the things that, again, in a, in a non-spoiler way that I, we might touch on more spoilery as we talk about it, is in the first movie, the character of Killmonger as our villain, right. um, we get told a lot about him. Mm-hmm. Um, we do see some of it, but we get told a lot. And, and the, the thing that they always say is show, don't tell. But in right. that movie, they tell you a lot of his actions and then show you his character, right? right. And Which so you, sold. and so exactly. And so it's like we see everything they tell us about the actions he took in the past tracks because of the character we see, right? Because right. of all those things. And, and so we we buy into it, even though we're being told, I don't need to see him being on these mercenary missions. I don't need to see him destabilizing mm-hmm. these countries or or assassinating a bunch of people because I can see from the character that they give us that that's who he is. This movie mm-hmm. does something different with uh, our our villain of Namor. Is we actually do see a lot of his background. We don't. We we kind of get it told to us as well, but it's mostly right. like visual. Like they're showing us what his origin was, what his background was, and for me, that didn't land as strongly as I mm-hmm. expected it to. Um, I did not connect. Well, with, with his journey as strongly as I did with someone like Killmonger. I'm not going to say it was bad no 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 i don't think that but it did kind of leave me wanting a little bit because i was kind of comparing i was comparing to you know the the version of killmonger that we got and how strongly i connected to his motivations and his journey and with namor i didn't feel that as strongly i really Mm. it was kind of one of those things where i went man i wish i I wish I understood his perspective a little bit more. Like it was, I, it was explained. I understand what his motivations were, but I just didn't connect with them mm. in terms of having that same, like with, with Killmonger, it was like, man, I buy into what you're saying. I like your philosophy, it, like totally the... makes sense. But the way you're going about it, it's like the Magneto problem. It's right. like what you're saying makes a lot of sense. But the lines you're willing to cross to accomplish your goals, I can't get behind, right? That was the Killmonger thing. With Namor, I didn't really feel like I could get behind his motivations. It, it really kind of – and so it just kind of failed on that level because I think they were painting – they were trying to paint him in that same light um, of like he's this tragic – you know, kind of figure that we should be connecting with and we should be kind of rooting for him on some level. And I never kind of felt that with with him. I don't know. How did you feel about I was going to say, I'm actually opposite. Killmonger, okay. I didn't connect mm-hmm. with as much as I connected with Namor. Okay. And I guess I see it as, uh, I don't, I'm not trying to bash anyone when I say this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that. No. Namor is almost Native American. So we have a scene where, you know, he goes somewhere and things happen and we see that, you know, he's talked about what happened to his people and why he's worried. And I kind of see relate in the sense of like, these are the Native Americans when conquistadors and everyone starts coming to America. They they don't know what to do. They are stricken by 
activities. I'll say it that way because it also leads into spoilers because it's just history. In the film too. It's just yeah. history. It's history. You know, things happen to them and some of them want to retreat and they try to leave some, you know, all the stuff that happens. And I guess that's why I connect a little bit with him because I kind of understand where he's coming from is like, well, I want to keep my people safe. I want to keep our culture alive. I want to, mm-hmm. you know, be, uh, be something, a leader for my people. And I kind of guess that's where I understood it more. And I kind of connected to an extent to him, but we also know I love Dr. Doom and he's one of my favorite villains. And this guy has that same mentality of the end justifies the means. Like there's always a way I'm going to win. And that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to make sure he's always in a place that he is winning no matter what. And with, sure. until we get to the spoiler part, I won't say that next line, but you know, that's why I think I connected with them because again, it was more of the native side. I was looking at it through like, okay, well as native Americans, he would want to flee once they see what happens with the conquistadors. Well, now everyone's just evil. Like we're the good guys yeah. only. All of you kind of like, like you said, the Magneto complex of, yeah, you know, the mutants. We're the righteous, you know, people. These guys look what they do to us. So yeah. I guess that's why and, again I connect with it too. And that's and that was kind of my point is that I think I should have connected with all of that as strongly as as I did with the Killmonger stuff in the first one. I right. just I didn't, and I don't know why. I don't know why it wasn't as it, strong for me. Um, but it Maybe just because it's wash witch and repeat because i mean it is the same thing as killmonger let's face I, it yeah i don't know i mean i again it's it's a it was a very it's a p- powerful story i think maybe just the way it was executed i just found myself not really connecting as much to who to his motivation in that sense um and you know i i mean and i'm not trying to throw any shade right. here but michael b jordan is one of the most dynamic actors of our generation he is. And he so really is. I think that, you know, as, as I think Tinoch uh, Huerta uh, did, a, did a very good job. I think he's mm-hmm. a very good Namor and I'm excited to see him continue that role uh, moving forward. But, uh, you know, I, I don't think it's a slight to say he doesn't have the same magnetism as Michael B. Jordan. And no, and I think so I think right. maybe I think that maybe <clears throat> was, was the slight gap because I do think Namor uh, is still a very good antagonist for the mm-hmm. MCU overall. He's probably a top 10 antagonist right off the bat. It's just for me, Killmonger is like one or two. And so right. it's like, I'm kind of comparing. Right. And in that sense, it, it fails the comparison just a little bit for me. Um, it's but like I do want to talk about, Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, it's like an apple range. You got your sweet ones, your tart ones. It's comparing the start sweet apple to a tart apple. There's both apples and different people are going to like them differently. You know, yeah. some are like one versus the other. Yeah, and I still did like actors. him a lot. I, yeah. Again, I just, you know, it, it kind of dropped it a little bit in the comparison. Point. Yeah. But I do want to talk about our returning characters and, and kind yes. of the, the overarching story is, you know, Wakanda is a nation in mourning, mm-hmm. having lost, you know, T'Chaka and T'Challa pretty quick succession. I mean, it's five or six year difference um, when you think about, you know, when civil war took place and King T'Chaka died to the point that T'Challa is, is now passing, but they also, he was blipped away. So five of these, you know, six, seven, eight years <clears throat> uh, intervening, he was, he was gone for that time period. Um, and so, you know, they're, they're a nation in disarray in mourning. Right. Um, and, and you think about it, the moment he came back, he went to go fight on another planet. <laughs> sure. Um, I gotta go fight guys (laughs) and and the world knows about Wakanda right that happened at the end of Black Panther um, that the world now knows who Wakanda is and what resource they possess and people know how valuable vibranium is you know the battle of Thanos all that stuff the battle Mm -hmm. of Wakanda with Thanos uh, you know all all of those things Um, and you know Certain countries in the world, including the United States, very predictably, mm-hmm. uh, are looking to exploit and perhaps, you know, take the, you know, vibranium from Wakanda. And so this right. is a, you know, a, a story of Wakanda looking to protect themselves, protect the resources, having lost their protector. Mm-hmm. Um As well as, you know, kind of finding their place in the world, finding their way, navigating their way through this, um, you know, kind of destabilization of of their, you know, leadership. Um, 
And then you have this new player on the scene that nobody knows about, mm-hmm. this underwater, uh, you know, kingdom of Talakan. Under the sea. Um, and, you know, how they're involved in the story, um, I think made a lot of sense. I, I liked the explanation. Again, I don't want to get into spoilers, but I, I liked how that was brought about and why they are now revealing themselves right. um, in this way and, and how that's going to move forward. Um, I thought that made a lot of sense. So in terms of the, the overarching story, I liked where it was going. Um, and, you know, I, I will say that this is the movie is Letitia Wright's, you know, Shuri's journey, right? Like sure. we see, she is the one that that goes on the biggest arc in this movie from where she begins to where she ends. And she has to navigate her grief um, over, you know, losing uh, these, these members of her family and what that means for her and what, you know, now she has to do. Um, and so we see, you know, her kind of have to navigate that. And, and I thought she did a great job. Mm-hmm. Angela Bassett um, was a powerhouse. I mean, I, I'm, you know, I don't know if she'll get nominated, but she gives gives a <clears throat> nomination worthy performance in this movie. Um, again, I think all the returning characters do a great job. I will say my one gripe, which I have the same uh, as as it is in the first movie, and then in the other movies where we see Wakanda, I need more Nakia. I need mm-hmm. more Lupita Nyong'o. She's so dynamic as an actress. She's great as this character. I want more. Um, and so that was, you know, once again, I felt like she got sidelined a little she bit did. in this movie. Um, and that's disappointing to me because I love her portrayal. And I love, I, I think by the end of the movie, you kind of understand why right. she's, she's not been as present in these right. other things. And I thought that actually, that explanation makes sense, mm-hmm. but it doesn't make me not want a, her there it's a cop because out because i still love her at um, the, it's a good explanation but at the end of the day it's an easy writer's cop out oh yeah this is why oh. a little a little bit yeah um, that's why that's anyways, why i'm not happy with it i yeah. i do think again just from a performance standpoint i think all the the actors and actresses did a phenomenal job um the overall storyline i i really enjoyed the way they brought in um Martin Freeman's character and and bringing him back into it. I think for the most part, that storyline worked as well. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll get into spoilers as to who else is involved when we get there. Right. Um, because I, there are some other characters that we do need to talk about. Um, and then, you know, kind of the, the third storyline is kind of this introduction of Riri Williams, mm-hmm. um, you know, who, who is going to have her own Disney plus series, um, Ironheart. And, uh, I I really enjoyed her uh, and I I enjoyed her portrayal. There were again, moments where it felt like that storyline because it wasn't as involved with the, you know, kind of the Chadwick Boseman kind of and T'Challa legacy portions um, did feel like they were kind of sidelined and maybe not quite as important to the overall piece. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, her character is a little bit of a, uh, you know, kind of a MacGuffin, a plot, you know, kind of, Hey, we just, you know, we need to talk about this character, but I still, I like the portrayal and I liked what we got with her. So I'm kind of torn. And that's where I come back to the other side of it. If we took all the Chadwick stuff out about like, you know, praising him, this is where to me, it falls a little short because we don't get enough of her. I know very, very little on her because she's actually relatively new in the comics. I believe in the last like 12 years or so. And I was never, I'm never outside of the movies i'm not a huge iron man fan of like i'm gonna go pick up the iron man comics i'll read him with avengers and the other team ups because i like when he's with them the solo stuff i'm always eh, it's a hit or miss for me so i'm i'm not familiar with her and that's why i kind of wanted to see them give us a little bit more of her i mean i think we got a decent idea of her personality which yeah. okay I, I got where you're coming from but i want i want that little bit more taste to it i want to it was a nice appetizer but can i see you know, the next course of the meal, at least to see where we're going, because I think she could have been a great character. Uh, We'll talk about the other stuff in the spoiler part where I had some issues with it. But I think overall, again, if we take the Chad stuff out, that tends to fall short. And that's where I get disappointed with the film, because we don't you mean both characters I love. uh, I think you're right. You know, we we got the write off of why. Oh, this is why she hasn't been here. Okay, we didn't get enough of her. I honestly would have liked, I know this might sound weird and I know they're subordinates. 
I would like to have seen more about Namor and uh, Namora and her. I forgot the other guy's name. The yeah. Uh, Ada, Adala or something like yeah. that. I don't know. Exactly. I kind of want to get more on them too. Cause again, they comment that, Oh, he's Namor is not like the other people. They were also superior fighters by like class differences. Like, I mean, you, oh, here's your fighter. And here's this guy who's a hundred years in a war that probably has all this knowledge and stuff. It's like no yeah. comparison between the two. So I wanted, I would like to have gotten a little bit more of them, especially once we get to the spoiler parts, some stuff that happens at the end which I was like, wait a minute, because again, I'm not also deep dive into Namor uh, uh, history. Yeah. At- Atuma. Atuma was the, the other guy? Name. Okay. Yeah. Namora and he's and actually, yeah, and Atuma is actually a, a villain to Namor in the comics. So he's Which, not portrayed that way in this, in this movie, but right. I think that, you know, there, there could be some groundwork that maybe he'll turn that way. Exactly. Um, and, in, in the future. And I would like to have seen more. Like maybe we see some of those almost kind of like, you know, it kind of is the same as let's face it, him and Aquaman have a lot of the uh the same character characteristics sure. and stuff. And I forgot his name, his brother, who is like the second in command, who eventually always wants to he's like on his a Aquaman side and then always eventually turns on him as like, no, we need to do this for our people, the Atlanteans, and they are start button heads. Yeah. And I guess I would have loved to have seen that, like, oh, you know, you should maybe at the end, you should have done this and like plant those. Yeah, seeds of, I like, think maybe. Yeah, I think I agree with you that um, for, you know, the, the Talakan uh, kingdom, we get time with those two kind of main, you know, Namora and, and Atuma. We get time with them, but we don't really ever get to know them. Right. We see them on screen. We see them fighting. We see that they're very resourceful and they're probably, you know, they're the two generals, if you will. Right. They're they're the two that, you know, kind of lead, you know, the the rest of the attack or whatever. Um, But we don't really see much. I mean, at the very end, we, we do see a little bit of kind of a, you know, how that relationship with Namor um, is in existence um, with Nemora. The two of them kind of have a final conversation, but certainly with Atuma, we really don't get much other than he's a fighter, right? And I agree with you that and it would have been honorable nice... fighter, I will say, because of one of the fight scenes. Sure, um, but it would have been nice to kind of have more of, uh, you know, what his kind What's of philosophy is, what you know, what he believes, like we really see Talakan represented only from Namor's perspective. We don't right. really see anyone else's perspective or ideas. And so I, I will agree that that was part of what made it fall a little bit flat is that Namor's philosophy wasn't really ever challenged by anyone right. that he was, that he had a relationship with. Like it wasn't until like he comes into conflict with Ramonda or Shuri, but he doesn't have right. an actual relationship with them. And so I would have no. liked to see, you know, a little bit of, you know, kind of Apparently, challenging of that. Yeah. All of them know how to, how to do a Haruken. <laughs> that's what they, uh, so the little symbol, they just yeah. put their hands up like that. And I was like, they're trying to shoot a Haruken? Oh, wait, maybe well, they're talking about Z. And, and, I, it, and I will just say, um, one of the things that was really stand out, and I think after we, we talk about this, we'll probably give our final thoughts and, and then move into the spoiler right. territory. Right. But, the kingdom of Talakan <clears throat> is a beautiful mirror to the kingdom of Wakanda. These are two societies Perfectly. that have been hidden for a long right. time that, you know, have kind of, uh, you know, built up their, their own way of life and preserve their culture. And mm-hmm. you have like, you know, Wakanda forever where they do this. And in this one, it's Talakan rise. Um, mm-hmm. You know, they have their kind of, this is what and they, they say. Get- and then they all, you know, they do this. Um, so and and then even like the first scene that we see Talakan, we go through the streets. We don't see like right. the the throne room or, or any of those things. We go through the streets and we see people, which is reminiscent of how we see Wakanda in the first mm-hmm. Black Panther movie. We see you know Nakia and T'Challa walking the streets, and we see how different you know people are interacting. And so I just it felt like a, a perfect kind of you know <clears throat> we're we're showing these two societies that have They're mirrored have always been kind of a reflection of one another without even knowing the other existed right. until t'challa makes that choice to make wakanda public right. right that is kind of the break of the difference and so now wakanda 
has taken a different path than Talokan has. Right. Um, and, and that's kind of, again, where we see some of the conflict that comes into play. Um, but again, it was beautiful. The production design, I mean, it looked so amazing. The underwater shots just looked incredible. And again, I don't, I don't like to crap on other things, but when you compare this to the way uh, Atlantis looked in, in Aquaman, to me, there's no comparison. It looks so much better um, right. in this movie than it did in that movie. And, and so ultimately I thought, again, it was a beautiful portrayal of, of that um, city. Um, I liked, you know, the way it was introduced to us. I liked the, the way they kind of, again, reflected the Wakandan society through this society. And, you know, you can see that they've had similar kind of, you know, philosophies and, and um, kind of even backgrounds in, you know, that they were kind of this protected area. Well, you know, other people that were around them got, you know, enslaved or, right. uh, you know, abused. I mean, like, yeah, you think of like, in the first one, they touch on, you know, how slavery obviously was a huge impact to the continent of Africa right. that, that Wakanda was able to be isolated from. Mm -hmm. They didn't, they were not affected by it because they, you know, protected themselves. They stayed isolated. They, you know, kind of avoided that fate. Um, and in this one, we see the Talakan people are able to escape the fate of, you know, the conquistadors um, and, you know, again, be kind of this isolated community that mm -hmm. doesn't feel the effects and the impacts of this horrible stuff that's going on and how that kind of shapes your mindset, how that shapes right. how you view the world. So again, I thought it was all really well done. It was. And, you know, I want to, like you said, let's wrap it up there. And then we're going to go into spoiler stuff because you touched on some stuff I want to talk about. So yeah. rating wise, what do you give it? I think I'm going to give this one about uh, 7.8 out of 10. Um, I think it was a very good movie. It's probably my third favorite phase four movie. I think I would still put um, Spider-Man No Way Home and Shang-Chi above it. Um, right. But this is, this is a very good movie. Um, and, you know, again, <clears throat> I think there are parts where it sings and it's amazing. Right. And there are parts that, you know, you go, okay, this is kind of the, the standard Marvel formula and it's still good, but it's right. not maybe great. Um, it wasn't quite as powerful emotionally even as the first one, even mm -hmm. though this was dealing with the loss of T'Challa and Chadwick Boseman, I do still feel a stronger emotional journey in the first Black Panther than I did in this one. Um, right. Even though this does have some cathartic moments and some moments where we get to process our grief. Um, and I thought those worked well. Uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, I think overall, I think, I think it's a very good movie, maybe not great with a couple of great performances and, uh, some really cathartic moments, um, dealing with the loss of, of T'Challa slash right. Chadwick Boseman. So I have two ratings for it. One, I give it a, almost the same as you. I give it a seven and a half out of 10 as a full movie. It was, it was a great movie. I think it did perfectly with what it was trying to do the send off to Chachala to Chadwick, the beautiful uh, moments. I don't want to say where some of them happened, but the, again, the moment of science at the very beginning of the film and something at the very end, a couple of things at the very end that mm -hmm. if you you're paying attention that you pick up on them, beautiful. Yeah. But if I literally took out that this was a goodbye to Chadwick, I dropped down to a six for me okay. because there's so many parts that fall flat, almost what you like, kind of what you said, but if I start trying to separate, like, okay, like compartmentalize, I want to look at it as the film stands on its own. I don't want to have, don't want to think about Chad. I never saw the first Black Panther. I have no connection to, to Chadwick. If, you know, our kid, if your kids, because they probably haven't seen all the films, were to watch this one as a, for some reason, as their first film, that stuff doesn't make sense to them. It's like, well, why are we, okay, well, I feel sad for him, but it's not hitting as hard as me and you and your wife who sure, have sure. watched 30 films and 20,000 shows and, yeah so that's where i drop it but i want to move on into the spoiler stuff because i want to touch on two things that you kind of ended on so if okay. you want to you know we're going to cut here for the the regular one watch our other video for all of the spoiler stuff uh and yeah so watch for that one